Hi, I'm Simon Koshmez, and so I'm going to talk about how mathematical models can be used to try to better understand and anticipate the spread of vector borne diseases. As you know, mosquitoes are major vectors for the spread of a number of viruses. Uh, dengue virus might be the, the most notorious one. We, we talked about it a number of times during the day already. It can lead to a severe disease and death. You have almost uh, 400 million people infected by dengue every year and it's endemic in, in subtropical and tropical regions. And you know that these arboviruses, when they reach your community, if you don't have immunity in, in the population yet, you can ex expect large number of cases in a short amount of time, so it can be a, a big burden for healthcare. And so the, one of the key objectives of my unit, uh, research unit at Institut Pasteur is to try to better understand the drivers and the dynamics of these uh, epidemics uh, with the view that if we can understand them, we can then also better uh, anticipate them to support planning. And building that kind of understanding is, is challenging because these, this is a very complex process. Of course, you need to have a good understanding of vectors. But this story is not just about vectors. For transmission to be able to, to happen, you know, you need a mosquito biting someone, then you need sufficient time for the virus to replicate sufficiently that it reaches the saliva and then have enough time for the, the mosquito to bite another person. So it's quite a complex process with a lot of constraints. And then if, if transmission can occur, then you can also imagine the difficulty of actually predicting what's going to happen in, you know, in your communities in terms of spread in these human populations where you have a lot of complex patterns of spread occurring. And last but not least, all, all these factors are going to be affected by a number of factors. So the, the elephant in the room, of course, is climate. Uh, where we know that both uh, you know, vectors uh, are only going to um, be sustained in an environment under certain uh, climate conditions, but that's also the case for transmission. But it's not just about climate. It's also urbanization, economic development, the immunity uh, you can see in your population. And so it's a very complex process, and that's typically the kind of situation where you want an analytical framework to synthesize all the information we have on these different steps uh, to build an understanding and then use that understanding in different applications. And the applications we are talking about can, can be very diverse and occurring at different uh, timescales. The first one is uh, uh, what's happening in the middle of an epidemic. And it's an interesting one because we already talked about it uh, this morning, but actually that's something that we hear about it today, but that's something we started working on like more than a year ago when we were contacted by the French government because there was a very atypical dengue activity in uh, Réunion Island, and they hadn't seen major epidemics of dengue for more than 40 years. And the, the questions they had for us, and that was in March 2018, so more than a year ago, was what's going to happen? Is it going to persist during the Austral winter? And if so, uh, what will happen in 2019? So we build these models uh, accounting for the, the, the complex relationship between the, the transmission potential of dengue and uh, climate uh, seasonality in Réunion Island. And our early predictions um, indicated that it would persist, and indeed it did. Uh, and now we are making like weekly predictions for uh, for for the government to uh, uh, to inform on you know when's going to be the peak and wh what's going to happen in the next uh, few uh, weeks. And for us, it's very satisfying to see that these predictions are actually used by uh, you know local administrations when we are talking to them. They are really used that for using these tools for for their planning. And so it's a, a very uh, re rewarding for 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 us. But of course, these tools are not just uh, useful for, for these uh, you know, predictions at the time scale of an outbreak, but they are more and more used to uh, try to anticipate what might happen in 10, 20, 30 years, both in terms of um, vector populations and whether are, we are going to see extensions, contractions, and eventually also in terms of uh, disease of burden. And, it's still, I'd say, very early stage here in, in, in what we can do. And I'll stop here and thank you for your attention. Thank you so much.
Dr. Simon.